Hello and praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Tony McGee, and I'm so blessed to serve as a senior pastor of Zion Hope Church, located on the east side of Indianapolis. On behalf of myself, Lady Kim, and the entire Zion Hope Church family, I want to thank you for visiting with us today. At Zion Hope, our mission is to advance the kingdom of God through effective evangelism, discipleship, and service. Our vision is to be a church that loves, a church that grows, and a church that serves. If you'd like to learn more about our ministry and how we impact our community, you can check us out on our website, www.zionhopechurch.org. You can also connect with us through our Zion Hope Church Facebook page, or you can connect with us on the Zion Hope Church YouTube channel. If you do not currently have a church home, why don't you give prayerful consideration to being part of the Zion Hope family? I would love to be able to serve as your pastor. My prayer is that you will continue to come again and visit us soon. Hope is here, hope is now, and there is hope for your future. I hope to see you at the Hope, Zion Hope. May God bless you, may God keep you, and may heaven smile upon you. Well, praise the Lord again, everyone. Uh, we are back with Bible study, and we have a new series. And what's our new series? Is building better relationships. So for the next 13 weeks, the next 13 weeks, we're going to focus on building what? Better relationships. Building better relationships. Because we all have relationships, right? Yeah. And no matter how good our relationships are, they can still get better. So we want to build be better relationships and build healthy relationships. What we're going to study is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to study 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And the lesson for today is what? Laying the foundation for great relationships. Laying the foundation for great relationships. What's a foundation? Base, a start. And the foundation, if, if you build a home and it's on a foundation, if that foundation is solid, the home can stand. The structure can stand, but if that foundation is weak or if it has cracks in it or it begins to crumble, what happens to the structure that's on top of that foundation? It'll crumble as well. And so we want to lay the foundation for great relationships because we need to have something to build on. And so the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, what does Paul say in 1 Corinthians 13 and 1? Number three. Amen. So laying the foundation for great relationships hinges on First Corinthians the thirteen verses one through three. Now, who's the author of this? The apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. And so I want us to understand that Paul understood what was taking place in the life of the church of Corinth and why he wanted to make sure they laid the foundation for great relationships. God created us for what? Relationships. God created us for relationships. We're social beings, but we relate to each other. And as we relate to one another, we should build and strengthen those relationships with one another. When God created Adam and Eve, and that's the best picture I could find of a black Adam and a black Eve. Okay. When he created Adam and Eve, he placed them in the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden is a beautiful place, isn't it? 
It's, it's a beautiful place. It's beautiful. And, and he created Adam. He put him in the Garden of Eden. But when he put him there in the midst of this paradise, he said something in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18b. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18b, the Lord said, it's not good for the man, the man who was where in the Garden of, of Eden, to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for, for him. God said he created man. And after creating man and putting man in this great, beautiful paradise called Eden, that no, he needs to have relationships. And so he created woman. He created Eve to be able to have a relationship with Adam so that then relationships could be given birth to and now we have relationships that are taking place today. So God is a God of relationships. God wants you and I to have relationships. And so in, uh oh, what happened to my thing, my, my love. Um, in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, I believe that, that Paul teaches us that this can be termed the greatest passage that's ever been written about relationships. That you could say this is the greatest passage that's ever been written. Because the believers in Corinth, they were having all kind of relationship problems. They, they were a church that was a young church. They were a church that was a gifted church. But they were a church that had some issues with relationships with, with one another. There were divisions in the church. There were confusion in the church and there was contention in the church about which gift was actually the most important gift. They were divided. They were confused and they became agitated and irritated with each other. Does that sound familiar? That happened over 2000 years ago and it's some of the same stuff that we see that happens today. And so even though Paul is writing to the church in Corinth to help them when they were divided, when they were confused or when they got agitated and irritated, he's writing this to us as well to help us to deal with things when we get divided in our relationships, when we get confused in our relationships and when we get agitated and irritated because we all get agitated and irritated and how we can deal with it. And guess what? This agitation and irritation, this confusion and, and this this, this, these problems, they begin to affect the church. They have began to affect the ministry. And so this is line in 1 Corinthians throughout the entire book. And so after discovering or discovering spiritual Paul then writes something very, very profound in the last part of chapter 21, verse 31. What does Paul say in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31? But he Eagerly. But eagerly desire. Remember, they were arguing about the gifts. Mm -hmm. Eagerly desire the what? Greater gifts. Greater gifts. And he says, now I'm going to show you the what? Most the most excellent way. Then he transitions into chapter 13, where we are today. And Paul is telling the church and he's telling us that love is the most important thing that we can have in our lives. Would you agree with that? Love is the most important thing that we can have in our lives. Love is the foundation for all great relationships, all great relationships, relationships between a husband and wife, between parent and child, not just a relationship between family members, but for a relationship that we have with everyone. Love is going to be the if we want to have a great relationship. So we said you have to lay a solid foundation. If we're going to lay a solid foundation, laying the foundation of love has two requirements. And the first requirement is this. The first thing we have to do is this. We have to do what? Analyze. What does analyze mean? Pick apart, search, discover. Take a hard look at it. Take a good study at it. 
we have to analyze, take a good look at the types of love. Because if we know about love and we're going to build a foundation of love, we need to know what types of love are there to build a foundation on, right? So as we talk about love in the English language, one of the challenges is we only use one word for love in the English language. So think about this. I could say, I love Minister Hannington. I could say, I love playing on my phone. I can say, I love chocolate chip cookies, ice cream. Mm. I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I start thinking about that. I can say I love sports, the Dallas Cowboys, the Los Angeles Lakers, the Golden State Warriors. Um, I can say I love you. I can say I love myself. Now, if I say that, do, does the word love mean the same thing in each and every one of those? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And guess what? The New Testament writers knew that. And they wrote in the Greek. They wrote in the Greek. And our Bible was translated. And as it was translated, we now get our transliteration from that, from, from the Greek. And so there are actually four Greek words that are used for love. And we kind of talked about this a little bit um, in one of the last but there are four. There are four words for love that are in the Greek language. The first one is what? Eros. Eros is the first type of love. It's described. And that's where we get our, our word erotic. It comes from, from eros. And that's a, a sexual love. Um, eros refers to a relationship that's based on what? Physical attraction. Physical attraction and that's eros. It refers to a relationship that, that's based on physical attraction and sex. And this is what is interesting. The word eros is not used in the New Testament. It's not used in the New Testament. But it's a type of love you have to understand. Eros. The second type of love that is described is what? It could be phileo or it could be phileo. It's however you want to say it, or however it best rolls off your tongue. <laughs> but phileo or but phileo describes the love between brothers and sisters. It's, it's between brothers and, and sisters. And that's where we get our English word Philadelphia. And Philadelphia is known as the city of, of, of brotherly word, love. So you have eros, which is a sensual or sexual love. You have phileo, which is a love between brothers and, and sisters. But then the third word that we have for love is storge. It's storge. It's storge. And storge means love for who? Family. For family. So when you look at a love between a, a mother and their child, or a father and their child, or a grandmother or a grand father and their grandchildren or a love between those who are in your family, that's storge. And that's an important love for us to understand. But what's interesting is none of these words are used in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. These, these describes types of love that are important, but they're not used in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, this is used. Agape. Agape. And again, agape is an enduring love. It's an enduring love. It's a sacrificial love that will do anything for the one who is loved. That's agape. Does that make sense to you? Agape is the love that, that is described here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's agape. And Jesus uses this word agape twice in John chapter 15, verse 12. In John chapter 15, verse 12, Jesus says, as he's talking to his disciples, my command is this, agape each other as I have agape you. Love What does that mean to you? When you think about agape love, and if Jesus is saying, agape each other as I agape you, what is that saying to us? That's why you say love each other 
At the very fullest. How did he love us? Unconditionally, sacrificed his life, gave us another chance, allowed us the opportunity to walk in the newness of life, cleansed us, made us whole, and though had patience with us, had, forgave us. How many times has he forgiven us? <laughs> <laughs> forever, ever, ever, ever. And so that's the love he wants us to have. Because agape love, in building better relationships, we have to have agape love. It has to be rooted in agape love. That it can't be rooted in eros. It can't be rooted in phileo. It can't be rooted in storge. It has to be rooted in agape sacrificial love. Now, this is very important because that's the foundation. But what, what kind of love do you need to have a, a great marriage? <laughs> okay, eros, uh, uh, agape. What? You got to have them all. You got to have them all. You got to have them all. You know what? Because you have to have eros because eros um, is the basic needs of mankind is sexual fulfillment. And you have to have that eros because guess what? If you don't have eros, how do kids come? And we were supposed to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So eros is important because the basic needs of a man and woman is, is sexual fulfillment. Eros is important to the husband and to to the wife. Well, how is this? Song of Solomon. And, and I'm not going too deep into Song of Solomon. Solomon. This is going to be brief. But Song of Solomon. How beautiful your sandaled feet. He's talking about his wife. O prince's daughter. Your graceful legs are like jewels. The work of a craftsman's hand. This is just showing us the type of love that Solomon had for his bride. For his wife. And that's the type of love that husbands ought to have for their wives. Yeah. Verse 2, your navel is rounded, a rounded goblet that never lacks blended wine. Your waist is a mound of wheat encircled by lilies. When you have this in the proper context, this is a beautiful love between a husband and a wife. Think about what the wife says in Song of Solomon 5 and 14. His arms are rods of gold set with what? Crystallite. His body is like polished ivory decorated with sapphires. I'm just trying to get us to see that it's important to have the Eros love and how that is ordained in the Bible when it's used in this proper context between a husband and wife that are coming together uh, in love. So God wants us to, to have Eros love, but he also needs to have brotherly love. Why? Because husbands and wives ought to be best friends. So that's needed in a marriage. But guess what? Even if we're not best friends with other people that we have relationships with, we still ought to treat them as brothers and sisters. And as we treat them as brothers and sisters, then they may in turn treat us as brothers and, and sisters. So phileo is important as well. But there always has to be storge because there has to be a family love because the family has to be first except for God. The divine order that God has for all of us is first our relationship with him has to be solid. Then he wants the family relationship to be solid. After the family comes the church and work and the community. But it has to be in that order. Whenever those things are out of order, there's a balance. You're going to have a difficulty with relationship. Um, if someone is serving in and you're serving and you're giving your all to God and you're giving your all to the service and ministry, but you neglect your family. What happens to your family? It falls apart. Or if you're working all the time and all you're doing is working, you pray and, you know, you get through praying, you leave the house and you just go to work, 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 work. And then you never get a chance to serve in ministry. You never get a chance to spend time with your family. What suffers? 
because it has to be in balance. Now, we have to work because if we don't work, we don't eat. So we have to provide for our families. We ought to work and serve in the church because that is what God created us to do. But we have to have a proper order and balance in that so that when we get out of balance, that's when things fall apart. But the important thing that husbands and wives and all of us have to have is the agape. Because husbands and wives must be willing to make any sacrifice for the benefit of others. We ought to be willing to sacrifice to help others. We ought to be willing to sacrifice to be able to to help others. So if we're going to lay a foundation, lay a foundation for great relationships, first we have to be able to analyze the kinds of love. And the kinds of love, again, are what? Eros. And that is a a sensual, sensual, sexual, erotic love. Then there is the phileo, which is the brotherly love brotherly sisterly love then you have store gay which is what the family and then you have agape listed last but most important because it's listed last because everything stands up on it and that is an unconditional sacrificial going the extra mile type of love so we have to be able to analyze the the kinds of love but then secondly we have to If we build a foundation, consequences we have to understand. If you're building a building and you have a solid foundation, and as you have that solid foundation, you start to construct it, there are some things that you cannot live out, leave out as you're building that foundation and as you're building that building. And we need to realize the consequences of not loving. And the Apostle Paul tells us this. There are four consequences, four consequences for not having agape love. There are four consequences. Now, there's, there's more than that, but there's at least four. And in this particular scripture, Paul says, the consequences of all I say is just what? Noise. All I say is just noise. Look at verse one. If I speak in the tongues of men and what? And angels, but have not what? Love. I am a. Noisy. Wow. Now, the 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 word tongues, it it means languages. So Paul is saying, in the languages of men, but have not love. The clanky symbol. If I speak in all these different languages, phrase tongues of men and angels to possible eloquence of speech, both here on earth and in heaven. That means if I can be able to speak and be able to, to take someone and put them in a trance by the words that I say, that I'm a great orator and I can be able to just speak and speak and speak and be like E.F. Hutton. When E.F. Hutton talks, everybody listens. Everybody listens. That's what he's talking about. If you have that type of persuasive um, tongue, if you speak that eloquent. But then he talks about, what's this? That's a gong. A noisy gong. What is it, a gong? What kind of gong make? The bong, bong, gong. Boom, gone. So I just want you to think this. Gone, 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 gone. That, that's, you just hear that all the time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Then you got not only the gone, gone, but then you got the symbols. Symbols. You can take a drum stick and or take the two symbols, and so if you keep going, and keep going, gong, 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 what happens? You get a headache? 
You get mad, you get mean, you get evil because it's annoying and irritating. In our relationship, when we speak without love, it's like we are just going gone, gone, all the time. That's what it's like. Because the most important ingredient in all relationships is communication. That's the most important. And how can we communicate if all we hear is oh, wah, 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 wah. and we don't speak with love? You know how you tune people out. They just talking to you and you look at them dead in the face. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Do you hear me? Mm hmm. Wah, 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 wah. Doom, doom. That's all we hear. But we have to learn how to effectively communicate, and that's what love helps us to do. Because, believe it or not, communication to relationships is like oxygen. Without it, it dies. If we don't have effective communication in our relationships, those relationships will eventually die. And you know what the number one complaint is about relationships? And this is husband and wife. This is parents and children. This is co-worker to co-worker. This is even ministry leaders in church. We can't seem to communicate. communicate. We cannot communicate. And you know what? One of the reasons why we cannot communicate effectively is because we do not obey what the Bible says. And the Bible says this in Ephesians 4 and 15a. Instead, speak the truth in love. And we're just going to stop there. Instead, speak the truth in what? In love. It has to be spoken. Speak the truth in love. We got to tell the truth, right? We have to be truthful. However, how we speak the truth is very important. We can say the right thing in the wrong way and it turns somebody off and they won't even listen. Think about it. If you know you're wrong, you know you're wrong and you know you hurt somebody and you know that you did something that really made them upset and they come and tell you about it. How bad do you feel if you hurt somebody? How bad do you feel? You know you've hurt them, right? So if, if, if I know that Sister Jackson knows she should not have treated me that way, if, if I know that, why am I going to come over to her and tell her, you know, I can't believe you treated me that way. I'm going to make her feel even worse. I can always say, hey, Sister Jackson, I would appreciate it, you know, if you, know, you just would have talked a little nicer to me. You know, that would have that helped me just a little bit. If I just go and start cussing and fussing, she's going to feel even worse. And then guess what? That relationship that could have been mended now is fractured and, and broken. And if we don't speak with love, all we're saying is noise. That's all we're, we're saying. So... One of the things that can derail relationships is speaking in just noise. Just talking, 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 and talking when we don't have love. Paul says there's a second consequence to not loving. And the second consequence is all I know is negated. What does negated mean? Of no effect. It's negated. All that I know, I have all this knowledge, I have all this intellect, all this that I need to be able to share. Now it's negated. It's, it's, it's now not useful because it's negative. Because it's negative. This is what he says in verse 2. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, but not love, I am I'm nothing. I wonder if anybody's ever felt this way. My kids won't listen to me. My friends won't listen to me. Church won't listen to me. Nobody listen to nobody. Nobody. Just look, she about to lose her, lose her mind. He's so upset, he can go to the refrigerator and get something to drink. She looking, just rolling her eyes, and he just tapped out. Little boy just, just tapped out. 
Won't nobody listen to me. Won't nobody listen to me. And, and I felt this a long, long time. My kids just don't listen to me. Well, you know what? What this person said was so, so profound. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much, how much you care. Nobody cares how much you know. No one cares how much I know until they know how much you actually, you actually care. Does that make sense? Is that important? Yeah, this is so true because nobody cares about how much we know until they know that we actually do, do care. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Now about food sacrificed to idols. We know that we all possess knowledge. Paul is saying, because they were talking about, they having different arguments about uh, sacrificing and, and eating and what you can eat and not eat. Um, we know that we all possess knowledge. We all have knowledge. And this is what he says about knowledge. Knowledge up. The difference between knowledge and love, because love does what? Knowledge makes your head big. Love helps others to get bigger. Others to lift them up. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Love that. Knowledge. And it's good to get knowledge. But it's love that builds up. If we don't love, then all our knowledge can keep us in a sense or give us a sense of pride. And it will be a boastful pride. And then what happens when we are full of so much pride and we walk around as if we know more than everybody else? Can what? Can't tell me nothing. Can't nobody tell me nothing. And then don't nobody want to hear what I got to say either. So you can't tell me nothing because I got pride. I know everything, everything. And what I don't know, I know. Because <laughs> I know everything. Unwilling. Unwilling to listen to anybody else. Now, are we all different? So if we're different, we're all many members of one body and Christ is the head. Now, the hand needs the foot. The foot needs the leg. The leg needs the chest. We all need each other. And each part is equally valuable. But guess what? I'm not listening to my hand today. Well, guess what? If I don't listen to my hand, I, I can't. How am I going to eat? I, mean, I got to. Because it's all equally important. So we have to make sure that we, when we get our information, we don't allow us, to, we need the knowledge, but don't let it puff us up because that can hurt and hinder relationships. Uh, were you gonna say something to Sister No. Oh, you were turning it. I saw your hand go up out of the corner of my eye. So um, in, in all of our relationships, we wanna make sure that, that people listen to us. And so in, 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 how do you feel when someone talks down to you? If somebody is just berated, you get mad, you get upset, yeah, insulted. You don't want to talk to them anymore. No, I don't want to deal with you. I don't want to fool with you. Why? Because you're talking down to me. And you know what? We got to make sure we don't talk down to people. We need to lift them up with love. We may have to have difficult conversations, but you can have difficult conversations in a loving way. Because you can show how much you care by just the words and the way that you say them. Because we can say the same thing. There's two people can say the exact same thing and get received in two different ways. Because in the way that it's been, been communicated. Because the way it's been. Were you going to say something? No, I was just saying. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The old me might come, so I got to reintroduce myself. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Pastor Orlando Jordan, if you're watching. Uh, Paul then goes on to say that there's a third consequence for not loving. 
all my faith means what? Nothing. Means nothing. Look at the last part of verse 13 too. If I have all faith so as to remove mountains, if I have the faith that can remove mountains, but I do not have love, I am what? Nothing. I am nothing. If, if we don't love, our faith, it really doesn't mean anything to God or anybody else. If we don't love, if we don't love, um, God is love. God is love. We are his children. So we are children of love. If we're children of love, then we ought to love because that's what we were created to do. We were created to love. And this is the thing that we have to understand as believers. As believers, it's much more than what we believe. Being a believer in Jesus Christ is much more than what we believe. It also includes how we behave. We have to set an example for others. If we're representing God, and we're God's representatives here on earth, we have to be able to represent Him in a way that's pleasing to Him. And if we don't love, our faith, our faith means nothing. It includes how we behave, the way we act, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way that we carry ourselves. All of that is important. All of that is important because it's how we behave. Um, we need to, the song, um, I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. Why do we know that we've been changed? Because I got a new walk, I got a new talk, I got a new song, I, I, I act differently, and people ought to be able to see that. If we've been changed, there ought to be some evidence. Doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. No, you will not be perfect, but we can still strive for perfection and try to get better. Galatians chapter 6, 5 verse 6. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. Founding the, the only thing, no matter if you're circumcised or uncircumcised, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. So the only thing that counts is faith when faith expresses in love. How can faith express itself in love? Okay, how can you tell if I have faith in God? By your words, by your actions. My words and my actions. My words and my actions. You can tell whether someone has faith through the way that they appear to you, the way they treat you. What's the old saying? Sometimes the only God someone's going to see is the God in, in you. And so my faith ought to express itself through love. And because of love, I'm going to now display love to you, to you, to you, to you, to you, and to you. And so our faith ought to express itself in our loving actions towards our brothers and sisters. Paul says there's one more thing. All my faith means nothing if I do not love all. Oh, that ain't what he said. That's what he just said. This is what he said, the last thing. All my sacrifice, the consequence of not loving is that all my sacrifices are nullified. And he says, if I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. If I say I'm going to give away everything that I have, and I'm going to deliver my body to be burned, which means I'm going to sacrifice my body. I'm going to sacrifice the things that I need, to, the, the things I shouldn't eat, the things that are not godly. He says, I'm going to make that sacrifice. I'm going to do that. But if I don't have love, I still gain nothing. I still gain nothing. Without love, everything is nullified. There, there was a man who said this, and you may have heard this from someone um, I worked all my life 
to give my wife a new house, five bedrooms, four baths, four car garage, big, big yard, white picket fence. I got her Bentley to drive in there. She got all the designer clothes on. She got the earrings on, the necklaces, the purses. I give her everything that she wants. And now she wanna divorce me. <laughs> Why? Because without love, it's all nullified. Without love, it's all nullified. Um, you, you think about some parents, not y'all, not, not y'all, but some parents buy their children everything. Smartphones, iPhone 1, 2, 27, 30, Xbox 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, PlayStation 2, 3, 4, buy them new cars, got designer clothes, they got every single shoe that's being created. All these shoes, got all their bling on, have everything they want, but they grow up resenting their parents or they end up breaking their parents' heart. Why? Because without love, it's, it's all nullified. And this is what the Bible says. Colossians 3 and 21. And it says fathers, but it can be interpreted for parents. Parents, do not embitter your children or they will become what? They will become discouraged. You know why so many children get bitter towards their parents? This is why. Because children spell love, T-I-M. That's how they spell love. And that's how we spell love when we are with one another as brothers and sisters. Do you have time for me? Do you have time? All that expensive stuff that gets bought, all that stuff, it, y'all, they look at it, whether it's from a spouse, a significant other, one of, one of your people that you're trying to buy something for to, because you feel bad. Oftentimes, you're just trying to cover up the fact that you feel bad that you ain't spent time with them. And so now you're trying to buy your way back into their life. And you got to remember this. I don't know how many people that are on their deathbeds that the thing that they say before they die is, I wish I would have spent more time at work. No, I wish I would have more time with those that I love, with those that are loved. So we need to make sure. Ephesians 5 and 16. We need to make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. We got to make the most out of every opportunity. This is the time for us to make the most out of every opportunity. We need to live for today and love for today. And that's the word I want to give to you today is live for today and love for today. Build a foundation for building great relationships because this foundation we built, it can help us to change the trajectory of our families. It can change the trajectory of our children. It can change the trajectory of those that we are close to, those in our community. And as we do it here within our family, here within our community, here within our church, then it spreads on. And it can spread like wildfire. Wildfire be able to set this whole place ablaze for Christ. So we have to remember, we have consequences of not love. All I say is just noise. Remember, if we don't love, nobody's gonna hear us because all we say is just noise. It's the gong, 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 or the clang, clang, clang. All I know, all my knowledge, because I got so much to share, and I can help you in your life. But guess what, if I have love, all I know is negated. All my faith, I'm so faithful that I can do this, that, and the other. Okay, I'm demonstrating my faith. I don't have love. No, all my faith means nothing. And all my sacrifices, all that I give, are nullified. It's time for us to build better relationships. It's time for it to start. And what's the start? By laying the foundations for great relationships.